Hello, I'm Amy Wilde. Well, I've made it from my road trip all the way from Perth via Exmouth up into the Kimberley. I am so excited to be here at long last. Now I'm at Winjana Gorge and we're about ready to start some crocodile capturing. This is for an important scientific study and I'm so excited. Come with me, this is going to be an absolute experience of a lifetime. Lalangara, that's what I'm going to tell them in Bunaba. You, you here to look after the Lalanga, the Kavada. Before we got started, we had the honour of being welcomed onto the land by Dylan, one of the Bunumbai elders, the traditional owner of Winjana Gorge. During the smoking ceremony, he tells the spirits of the gorge that we are here to protect the local population of Lalanga, the freshwater crocodiles. Here they are, over 100 crocodiles within a single gorge system run by the Department of Parks and Wildlife under the consultants of Dr. Ruchira Somawira. This project aims to collect as much data on the crocodiles as possible at Winjana Gorge and two other nearby water bodies that we'll look at a bit later. This survey is the first part of a before and after study on the effects of cane toads on these crocodiles. The toads aren't here yet, but in a couple of years, tragically, they will be. As we don't know what the effects will be, we have to look at everything, including crocodile numbers, distributions, health and stress levels. This is the most detailed croc survey to be conducted in Western Australia to date. Super exciting, like this barramundi. This is the first thing we caught in our preliminary netting attempts. Being a national park, he was released unharmed. As this survey is one of a kind, there was a bit of figuring out to do, but we'll be wrangling crocs in no time. So we ended up getting them using a scissor method with two different nets. We got so many, it's awesome, but they're only on the other side of the bank, so we've got to go move the stuff over. So exciting. Here's our prizes from trapping session number one. Pretty good success. Hey buddy. So we'll do that when I do. We worked well into the night on that first day. So cool to watch the flying foxes leaving their roosts en masse for the night while we drag nets through the water. So special out here in the Kimberley. As you may have guessed, for such a big survey, we needed a big group of people. Along with Dr. Ruchira leading the show, we had parks and wildlife staff, indigenous rangers, two researchers from Monash University to take blood samples, from which stress levels would be determined back at the lab, and a pile of biologically skilled volunteers, including myself. Fantastic, well that's day one done. I'm so tired, but I've had so much fun. So we drove out from Broome to Injana Gorge today, and then in my case at least, spent about two or three hours treading water and dragging these massive nets across this water hole. But it was so good, we caught 25 crocodiles, we worked out our methodology, started to get some really important data for the population. So yes, yeah, it's been a definite success. I'm so pooped though, but I tell you what, I love crocodile wrangling. It's my new love. I'll see you tomorrow, stay wild. To the black kite swirling overhead, good morning to you. The next day, proper processing of the crocs we captured last night began. We tied them up in this bit of water so they were comfortable overnight. Now it was just a matter of getting them out one by one so we could safely record just about everything about them. Their favourite colour, what type of coffee they drink in the morning. Look at this big one! <laughs> <laughs> Some crocs were definitely more happy about this questioning than others. Also, while we're here, just to clarify, these are the relatively small, generally non-aggressive freshwater crocodiles, Crocodilus johnstoni. The man-eating estuarine or saltwater crocodiles don't tend to occur in this particular water body or the others we're sampling, though they can be present in certain freshwater systems throughout the Kimberley region and Northern Australia, despite their name. Got him. <laughs> awesome. So these measurements are very, very important because we are, when you are doing recaptures, that gives the idea of uh, the condition of the animal, the growth, everything, so make sure they are very precise. Here's Dr. Ruchira giving us all a rundown in what to do. In any scientific endeavour, consistency is the key, 
So it's critical that we all do exactly the same things in exactly the same way. Here's a little breakdown of what we did. First we check for injuries. <laughs> He's got his complete snap. After doing all these measurements, we're checking for parasites and then sexing them. Oh, you're getting boys! <laughs> yeah, there's tape. Uh, yeah, that's all done. Yep. Yeah. Stuck. <laughs> 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 Nearly done now. This is definitely the least fun part individual marking. We cut up to three scoots or pointy tail scales in an order unique to each croc. This is so that later on we can recapture individuals and access all of the data we're collecting now to compare their size and health after the onset of the cane toads. It can bleed a bit, but it doesn't affect them negatively. Also, of course, for this entire study we have obtained the necessary animal ethics approval, which is always needed for anything involving animal interference. What we're doing here is the weigh-in. Do you like our handmade croc harness? There we go. Yep. Okay. Sick man! <laughs> They're old ones from last night. One or two of the crocs were caught in the wild by hand, but they tended to be a bit smaller. Like this. Baby croc, what an adorable one. He's quite a thrasher. Wow, listen to that sound. Absolutely adorable. So happy to get this one. This is a long bit of water just adjacent to the main pool we've been trapping in so far. We walk down it in a line, splashing around, trying to frighten the crocs into a double row of nets waiting at the end. And when we first pulled up the nets, we found... Oh, swordfish! Oh my goodness! Ah. Oh, the swordfish is you heard it, the critically endangered freshwater sawfish and likely a new record for the Leonard River system. What an absolute win! All of the important details were recorded. Uh, can you, can you, you take a full body shot? Okay. Freshwater sawfish? Oh, you see and they're critically endangered, yeah. yeah. They should for be. Us, see you know. later buddy, what an amazing find. Yeah. Anyways. Once all of the capturing and processing at Winjana Gorge is done, it's time for the release. Here's the next water body we spent a day at. This one is close to Winjana Gorge and still part of the Leonard River system, but outside the National Park on station property. The water is deep and long, but crocs were spotted here, so we've got to try our best. Genetic studies on the tissue samples collected from their tails will tell us how much they move between areas of water. Awesome. Well, we only got one crocodile on our first try out here, but we also got this fellow, the sandstone long-necked turtle, Chelodina barangangii. Awesome. He's so cute. We've got a few of these guys running around out here in the, Kim in the Kimberley. So pretty. All right, well, let's put him back. Here you go, little guy. Bye-bye. Okay, take two. We might try a different method. So we got this long bit of water. The goal is to get two nets and trawl the whole bit, try to get the crocs. Let's go. Alright, snag. Or so I thought. Alright. 
Woohoo, we got one! Usually, untangling the crocs was relatively simple, but like everything involving animals, there were always exceptions. This guy clearly did a few death rolls in his net. Eventually, a knife was called for. We were catching a few barramundi on this survey, but this particular fish drew the short straw. We're not in a national park anymore, which means as long as the Bunaba fellows are happy, it's break time. So, you know how I said most crocs were really easy to untangle? Well, here's another one that really wasn't. This also happened to be the biggest croc we captured on the trip. Just, just casually. As always though, we got there in the end. Just, you know, just took a bit of extra work. And a few blades. Turns out Tula's knife was a bit sharper than I thought at first. Oh well. Most crocs require one, maybe two people to carry them. This fatty required three. We soon learnt the importance of taping every croc's legs as well as jaws so they couldn't run away under any circumstances. I just love those feet. Look at them, like a little webbed hand. Next it was just a matter of moving Big Fatty to a bit of water body so we could rest in comfort while we waited for processing time. You already know the drill with processing, so let's move on to our final destination. Yeehaw! Welcome to Tunnel Creek! Back in National Park Country, like Winjana Gorge during the day, this is a major tourist destination on the Gibb River Road. But at night, tourists have to leave and we have the whole cave to ourselves. We're going to have to explore every deep pool to put in our best effort at capturing the few crocs that have been spotted here. And it gets seriously cold. Now, can you spot the croc Dave's after here? You need super good eyes, you can just see his eyes and his snout right up against the wall. It's the desert tree frog, Littoria rubella. Caves are unbelievably awesome. Far more than just crocodiles and bats, these places sport all kinds of specially adapted fish and invertebrates on the walls and in the water. For example, check out this amazing common eel-tailed catfish, Neocilurus hurtlii. And this little shrimp. Okay, okay, back to Crocs. Can you see this one? You can only see a section of his tail. He's hiding under the bank. This was the only croc we managed to get that night, unfortunately, but Dave made sure we did get the one at least. Oh, look at him. He's going to go for it. Oh. oh, there he goes. Got away that time. But you're going to have to take my word for it when I say we got him in the end. Almost time to finish up this story, I think. But first... Wow, check out this cherubin. Look at those long blue tip claws. Amazing. All right, let's put him back. Wondering what that crazy Latin name, Macrobrachium spinipes, actually means? Awesome. Okay, well, after four long days, we're all done. The crocs have been caught, processed, and now they're right back as they were. Happy as Larry, if you can pick them out there. Everyone's floating, just as if nothing ever happened. What a great time I've had. This has been amazing. Met some incredible people. Thanks to everyone. Hope you enjoyed it yourself. Stay wild, and I'll see you next time. The walk. Yeah, good. We went off track a lot. Mm. We made our own track. <laughs> you know what? We can get onto the beach.